Hello YouTube. If you've paid attention, you might have noticed that many people on this platform when they discuss lifting only focus on the physical aspect because they believe it to be the only thing that matters. So they'll talk about exercise selection, about programming, about uh, proper form. And to me, that's not enough because it's only 50%. And the other 50% is the spiritual, it's the mind. I have come to the conclusion personally that these are also maybe the most important 50% because they directly impact the other half. To me, you can have the best strategy in the world. If the intent behind it is not strong, it's going to fail. You can have the best technique in the world, the best execution in the world. If you don't know why you're doing it, how you do the lift matters very little. So what I want to do today is I want to remove us from this materialistic approach to lifting and instead focus on the unseen. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to be uh, invoking or summoning ghosts, but we are going to focus on the immaterial for a bit. And reshaping our mindset towards that spirituality is also key in the sense that it's going to allow you to keep the physical in shape. I think that many people nowadays have received poisonous information on this platform because they have failed to take into account that there is no such thing as purely factual information. Every information you receive on this platform is also part emotions because the people that share it are emotional creatures, they are human beings. And in a sense, this new wave of evidence-based information on YouTube Fitness has made you forget that. You truly do think that you're ingesting purely factual data, and that's not the case, you're not a robot. But the problem with that data you've been ingesting is that sometimes it contains negative experiences that can turn into self-limiting beliefs. Self-limiting beliefs that then, in turn, impede your ability to develop the physical. So in a sense, by taking care of the mind and putting in place strategies to develop the physique through spirituality, we are also going to make sure that our physical ability to do so is going to be taken care of. I believe that the two work together. So if you ignore one, you're not going to be able to use the other to the full extent of your potential. And talking about potential, it's also what I want you to reclaim with this video. Before I even give you strategies or methods to utilize image training or to use the placebo effect, I want you to go back and to recall a time before lifting where you are not yet poisoned and polluted by information. A time where you only had possibilities and no limitations. If you can do that, you are on the right path because I think that this is the state of existence throughout your lifting journey where you had the most potential. And that's paradoxical. You could tell me, well, okay, but it's also when I was the dumbest. Not technically incorrect. You are very dumb. And it's that stupidity I want you to recall. I want you to go back to a time where you believed that everything was possible, that there was no limitations. So in a sense, I am asking you to renounce reason. Not necessarily because having a Cartesian approach to lifting is a bad thing, but having only that at the detriment of faith and trust is going to, down the line, lead to you distrusting your very ability to make progress and to get gains. So this is this immaculate innocence that we are attempting to reclaim right now. And this, to me, was the state where you were closest to who you truly are, which, of course, is key because if we're going to attempt to build the physique of our dreams, well, you have to know what you want in the first place. I think that many people, sadly, the more information they ingest, the more of the personality of the person that shares the emotion they also take in to the point that they stop really being themselves. So the day they actually achieve their goals, they're not very happy or even fulfilled because it wasn't really their goals in the first place. So that's one form of misdirection in a sense. Then there are those limitations I just spoke about. So I'm certain that at some point or the other in your fitness journey, you have listened to someone who told you that this was impossible, that this physique was impossible, you couldn't do this. The truth in this case doesn't really matter. What matters is that they placed a limitation in your head that isn't an added benefit to your life. This is what I call disenchantment. It's when you go from a state of innocence to a state of jadedness because the people you listen to are pruning possibilities. They're shrinking your world. And that's not a good thing because Looking at information, information should instead expand your world. It should expand your horizons. But instead, most of what YouTube Fitness does to people is it makes them more dogmatic. It makes them think that, 
all of these possibilities are not really possibilities because this person said so. So they turned their back to it, but they never even attempted that. So why exactly do fitness influencers do that to you? Well, the first reason is because they're not self-aware. But the second is because they truly do believe that they're doing you a favor. They think that by telling you what will and what will not work, they are saving you from the disappointment. Parents also attempt to strip their kids off of their innocence to prepare them for the quote-unquote real world. But I've always found this approach to be quite stupid because one, the real world would take care of that eventually anyways. And two, what exactly was the real world going to do to you that what they did to you didn't already do? Imagine if you had unlimited expectations. You go out and you're disappointed. Well, the worst thing that happened is this. You got disappointed. What these people do is they disappoint you earlier so that you don't even attempt the thing because they think it saves you time. To me, they're not saving you time. They're robbing you of very important experiences. Growing pains and failure in life is very important. If you always have someone who prevents you from these experiences, the only thing you get, again, is that disappointment. So you get the negative emotion without the positivity that would have come with the possibility of success. This is why I said that uh, influencers are just, in a sense, projecting their own negative emotions onto you. It didn't work for them, so they say it won't work for you. Is it actually for your sake or is it maybe for their sake because it makes them feel better? You can also transfer that to your parents. Uh, I know that it's hard to think about the people that gave us life in this light, but... It is needed because it's the only way for you to understand what has been taken away from you, your innocence, and then to understand the value of that state so that we can actually get back to it. And the reason why we want to get back to it is that we do not want to be like these people. We do not want to perpetuate the cycle. In most cases, having unrealistic standards has absolutely no negative impact on your life whatsoever. Worst case scenario, you put in the work, you don't meet that very lofty goal, so you thought to actually reach the moon, but you land in the stars. You still end up with something valuable and something rewarding, because at the end of the day, you accomplish something. If you believe in these people who try to save you from disappointment, however, what's going to happen is that you won't put in the work, so of course you'll get no results. Between the two, which one is the best? I think that it is obvious in this case that these people who call themselves realists are actually just pessimists. The problem is that this is a very strong psychological bias that is known as the Galatia effect. Uh, its twin concept is called the Pygmalion effect. I've discussed that on the channel in the past. The only difference between the two is that the Pygmalion effect is the belief that others have in you. The Galatia effect is the belief that you have in yourself. And it's quite simple to understand. It dictates that life is essentially a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe that you can, then you can. And if you believe that you can't, then you can't. And this is, of course, summarizing the entire process, but it really is as simple as that. So if I were to explain to you how the Galatia effect would function for someone who constantly tries to avoid disappointment and has low standards and expectations, someone who is not innocent anymore, it would be as follows. They start with self-limiting beliefs. So they think, okay, this is not possible, this is not possible. In return, this means that when they do put in the work, they have very low goals, which results in them putting low efforts in and getting very little in return. This confirms this idea that they had in their heads that they had low potential to start with. So it also lowers their self-esteem. And when they go back to point one, the next time they'll have to put in the work, their self-limiting belief is going to be even stronger, meaning that they'll put even less of an effort in, etc., etc., as you see, it's a very vicious circle. And the worst part being that you bought into the notion of limitations, limitations that, again, don't exist in nature, they're not organic. By believing you made them real, then you reinforce and feed them until you get to a point where it looks like they were always there in the first place. But if you can recall that innocence of yours, you will get to see that they were not. And that is the key aspect of it. If you can recall a time where you did not have these limitations, then surely you can imagine a new version of you that doesn't have these limitations anymore. And when we get to that point, we can even turn the Galatia effect on its head because if it's possible to screw yourself by thinking that you have a ton of limitations and you have low potential, then surely the opposite is also true. If you believe you have infinite potential and you completely reject the notion of limitations, what is going to happen? Well, that vicious circle becomes a good circle now. 
you end up putting in more work because you believe that you can do it. You end up getting much more results back. Your self-esteem skyrockets. So you have now even less limita limiting beliefs. You put in more work, etc., etc. This is the difference between the mindset of a loser and the mindset of a champion. And all of that, whether you are caught in a negative or positive Galasha effect, depends entirely on your state of disenchantment. If you have been disenchanted, most likely you have a negative outlook on life and therefore your life is going to be negative. If you have a positive outlook on life and you still have a sense of wonder, you are going to have a good approach to life and your life is going to be mostly positive. There's a specific sentence in French that I like very much that goes, Ils ne savaient pas que les dragons n'existaient pas, donc ils en ont vu un. In English, it will translate into, They didn't know that dragons didn't exist, so they saw one. In this case, the dragon is your potential. Whether you believe it is here or not, is going to dictate whether it is here or not. And once you have regained that innocence and your potential, we can move on to actually trying to make this potential become a reality. Because for now, it is still immaterial. But you understand that until you are managing to reclaim your potential spiritually, it was never going to manifest itself in real life. So now that this step has been taken, we can move on to image training. And image training is going to be the creation of ideals. It's going to be work that you put in so that you can create in your mind the image of perfection that you wish to attain one day. Keep in mind that the state of disenchantment I was speaking about is not limited to the individual. It is something that affects the entire planet. And it's something you can see on a collective level because we also do not have ideals out there anymore. In the past, there were heroes of great stories that went on journeys that would inspire everyone. We would create magnificent statues for people to look upon and reflect on their own greatness. All of this was the collective manifestation of an ideal that was shared by people who still had a sense of wonder, who still were innocent and still believed that their potential, that human potential was absolutely infinite. Which is why if you look at the Greek gods, if you look at the stories of old, all of the heroes are impossibly strong and muscular. If you were to look at it with a Cartesian rational mind, you would say, well, that is not possible. A human can do this. A human can't look like this. And by doing this, you miss the point entirely. You consume this information as a matter of fact, but you don't look at the spirituality behind it. And that spirituality is a message that is giving you lofty goals. This is what these stories and these statues have always done. They try to remove you from the physical to let you know that if you want to get close to that greatness, it's going to take more than just the physical. You're going to have to be able to transcend the material world and accept within the spiritual realm that it is possible in the first place. That is how you achieve greatness. First and foremost, you reclaim an idea that is worth striving for. Psychologically speaking, if your goal is mediocre, with what I just explained to you with the Galasha effect, logically, the amount of effort and time you will put in towards it will also be low. You will achieve less, you will have lower self-esteem, etc., etc. Instead, your goal physique, your ideal that you're creating through image training should be unattainable. You should be unrealistic. These expectations should be so big that even you yourself have trouble believing that it is possible. Only then do you have a goal that is worth shooting for. If the goal is realistic and you tell yourself, well, I can clearly achieve that, then you are not shooting high enough. This is the only thing that makes a goal worth shooting for. And if you want an example, I can share my goal physique with you guys. You might be familiar with the Bezeke physique. That is an archetype of what I want to look like, but not the exact body. My personal goal body is adult gun from Hunter Hunter. If you look at that body, you will know immediately that it is not achievable by a human being. It's not even achievable by someone on drugs. The arms are too big. The legs are too big. The waist is too tapered. Everything is too massive. Everything is too perfect. And that is exactly why this is my goal. Because I will never achieve it, but I will never stop striving for it. Which is why I will most likely get very good results regardless of if my goal is met or not. I want you to do the exact same thing. And once you have done that, once you have this ideal and image in your mind, I want you to visualize it as often as possible. I want it to be a constant thought. I want it to become an obsession. 
to the point that I actually encourage you to have reproductions of it in your gym or around your house, in your bedroom. I want you to have a poster of it. I want you to look at it a lot. This is what is going to push your spirit upward because you're going to be constantly faced with a greatness that you do not yet possess, which is going to make you want to put in more effort. Again, this will only be efficient if you manage to re-enchant your life, if you have pushed away self-limiting beliefs. If not, this poster and this visual of your goal body will just be a constant reminder of your own failure. Because when you see it, you will tell yourself, well, I will never achieve that. This would be detrimental. This would be negative. Which is why the first step of reclaiming your innocence was so important. When you were a kid and you were watching those comic book characters or that guy in the movie, nothing in you thought that was impossible. Nothing in you. This is the state that you have to reclaim. Is it possible that you will reclaim it 100% in earnest? No. The rational side of your mind is always going to be there, but I want you to push it away because in this specific scenario, it is not needed. It is just detrimental. In a sense, I want you to approach this matter like a sculptor. If one is to make a statue, first and foremost, they have to visualize what the statue is going to look like. There is a point at which the statue exists in the mind of the sculptor and not yet in reality. If that step is not taken, the statue will never exist. If the sculptor is not able to believe he has the ability to make that statue happen, it will never happen. Treat your physique with the exact same approach. If you can't envision it, then certainly your ability to make it happen is 0%. And if you think about it, the action of building a body logically speaking, is much more attainable and even reasonable than a statue. A statue, you start with a rock, or you start with a piece of wood, or with a pile of clay. And from this, the sculptor will make a beautiful woman, or he will make a lion. This transformation is much more impressive than your ability to put on muscle that is just a biological process. And yet, the sculptor believes it. He believes in his ability to put it into action and to create it in real life. And that is due to one thing and one thing only. Belief. The belief in a vision dictates whether or not the vision is going to come to life. If uh, you know your mythology, you know that Pygmalion was the name of a sculpture. And the reason why the effect is named after him is because he imbued so much love into one of his creation that the creation itself came to life. Of course, does it mean that the statue actually existed as a human being? No. It's the metaphor behind it that is interesting and important. He believed with such fervor that he accomplished an act that is completely unreasonable and that most people would deem impossible. This is the type of intense mindset that you must achieve. But just achieving the mindset is, of course, not enough. If Pygmalion just wished for the statue to come to life but never actually made the statue, nothing would have happened. So... Now we're going to move on to the second step of image training, where you are going to put all of that into action. I'm certain that for some of you guys who are interested in visualization, you understand that visualization without action is nothing. The two together create manifestation. That is how it works. It is the movement of the spirit towards a specific goal that then is followed by the movement of the body towards that same goal. For anyone who has watched Rapper Baki, I'm certain that there is a specific scene that is coming to mind right now. There is a moment of the story where Baki, who is trying to become a better fighter, tries to imagine the creation of an opponent that would allow him to level up his skills. And he is so intent on developing his skills and becoming the strongest man on earth that he manages to create a, a two meter tall, a six feet tall praying mantis, and he has an actual fight against it. Now, of course, I'm not going to ask you to do that because in the story itself, it's a metaphor. The metaphor is the fact that the spirit and the mind has an impact on the material world because it is what moves the body that has an impact on this material world. So just like back, he managed to manifest opponents to sharpen his skills and become stronger. Our second step in image training is going to be to use psychological tricks that are going to promote the construction of our physiques. And this is when we run into another problem that is linked directly to self-limiting beliefs. You might now have managed to reclaim your innocence. You might have started to believe that your goal body is within reach. 
But if you don't believe that the methods that would get you there work, then it is all for nothing. The core body will just stay in your mind and never actually manifest itself. It's what I said at the start. You can have the best training strategy in the world. You can have the best technique in the world. If you don't believe that what you're doing actually works or amounts to anything, nothing is going to happen. That is the now infamous placebo effect. If you give a drug to someone and you tell them that it is efficient, if it is a placebo and has no actual innate effect, as long as the person believes it does, it can have positive influences on the health of that individual. That is absolutely insane and we still don't quite understand how it works. The only thing we know is that it works. It has been verified thousands of times. But interestingly enough, the lifting wood has never really taken advantage of this. Many times you will hear people say that a certain lift or method worked because you believed it worked, so it's only placebo, as if it took away from the effectiveness of the practice. Maybe it's because, again, these people have a Cartesian approach to things and they only accept evidence-based terminology or methodologies. What I hear and understand, however, in this scenario is that you follow the method that on paper should not be working and it worked because you believed in it. What if we can tap into this? What if we can use that placebo effect and apply it to every single aspect of our training? Then, even if technically it's not optimal, it's still going to get us great results because we're going to believe that it does. And even crazier than that, this means that an optimal exercise on paper will become suboptimal if you don't believe it does. Because the placebo effect works both ways. On the other side, it's called a nocebo. If you see these two things and these two concepts, it's impossible to claim that the practice of lifting is relegated to the physical, because this quite literally can have an impact on the physical results that is so high that it can actually negate the effect of a practice or enhance it based only on how effective or ineffective you believe the practice to be. The outcome of an action depends both on the execution of said action but most importantly, on the belief that it will bear fruits. As long as you have that self-belief, you will be fine. If you lose it, you will crash and burn. So this is what I want you to work on as much as possible. Believe that you have no limits and believe that what you do in the gym works. But it's not enough that I just tell you to do that because it's very easy for me to sit there and tell you to just believe in yourself. Instead, I'm going to give you methods, just like the Galicia effect I explained to you, that are going to create momentum for you where you will have to believe because you will see results. So the methods that I personally employ to maximize the use of the placebo effect is, for example, the action of looking at the muscle as you train it and visualize it training. It's an advice that has been given to me by someone who knew absolutely nothing about training, so they were still innocent. And unsurprisingly, they gave me very good advice. So they told me that when I was training my bicep, for example, it was a good idea to visualize the inner muscles of the bicep stretch and contract because it would, in a sense, make the bicep grow faster. Now, does that make any sense in terms of biology? Absolutely not. But in terms of the placebo effect and the Galicia effect, absolutely. Because you end up believing that what you do has insane ability to transform the bicep, so, logically, you're going to apply yourself more, put in more effort, be more consistent, which naturally will lead to more results, more of an ability to apply yourself, etc., etc. You are going to build up that momentum. And in the same vein, I would like you to connect the ideal physique you created in your head with your practice in the gym. So when you train your bicep, try to imagine how you want your bicep to look like. To link it back to back here, it's a little bit more unknown because it's in the previous seasons. But there is a scene where Baki himself talks about the fact that there has been studies that show that people who picture their ideal body as they train the body parts see better results. And at first I didn't actually believe it, but looking into it, it's a thing. And this is why image training is so prevalent and was so prevalent, especially during the bronze and silver era. Most of these guys will find practiced this visualization, they practiced this imagination where they were constantly trying to summon this body that they were dreaming of. It can be through meditation, if it's something that you're into. I personally like to do it as I train, because I think that the best moment in your daily life, where you're the most connected to both the spiritual and the material, is when you're actively lifting weights. 
Of course, this is much easier on isolation work. Uh, on compounds, you want to be a little bit more focused. But if you work on the muscle in particular, like the bicep, for example, this is when you can reutilize mind-muscle connection. Mind-muscle connection has two branches. There's the material branch, the physical branch, that of course everyone focuses on, which is the ability of your own self to follow the muscle working as you train it. That is a good application, don't get me wrong. But I think that the second one, the spiritual one, is much more important, and that is the spiritual one. The spiritual application of mind-muscle connection is this ability, as you train the muscle, to picture in your head what you want it to look like. Now, it might sound crazy until you realize that this is just another application of the placebo effect. The placebo effect essentially dictates that everything that the human mind believes in will manifest in reality. Once again, to connect it to stories that I love, in one piece, there is a very small panel of a boat falling from the sky and a, 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 a false quotation by an author that never existed that says that everything that the human spirit and the human mind can imagine can manifest itself in reality. And I believe in that 100%. But that superpower is only available to you if you have the ability to not distrust it. That is the vicious part about that. I think that there is almost poesy in it that humans have infinite potential and ability for creation as long as they believe in their own ability to do so. So since it is possible to rob yourself from the ability to tap into the placebo effect, I've personally designed a little practice that I would like you to do that is also a form of image training that is going to retrain your ability to imagine things to make them come into reality. What I like to do personally is I like to visualize my sets throughout the day. So let's say I have four sets of overhead press at night. Throughout the day, whenever I have time, I will imagine myself doing those reps. And I can attest to the fact that this is extremely effective. Not only do you know why you're doing the set, you also now have the ability to spend less focus on it because you already did your set mentally. So now you can focus on actually visualizing the muscle. You are also going to see more results from that movement, which will build more trust make you believe the movement works, which takes care of both the Galasha effect and the placebo effect. Not only have you removed your self-limiting beliefs because you have already achieved that set earlier in the day in your head, you also know that the movement is going to get you results because it has in the past. And for the most part, for humans to believe in something, they need to have experienced it at least once. And that was the goal of this video. I hope that my words excited you enough that you're going to give it a serious try. And the beautiful thing about all of these aspects of image training is that it's going to take up so much space in your mind that there will be none left for self-limiting beliefs. That is truly the point of this entire thing. In truth, you are just unlearning negative biases that have limited you for so many years because you are not turning your back on effective methods just because someone else told you that they're not effective. That is really the dilemma of any growing lifters. The more information comes into your head, the more self-limiting beliefs, and the less you're able to use that information. Once you have reclaimed the spiritual and your ability to be innocent, then you become able to best utilize all of this information because you can put it towards building the statue. It's not a waste anymore. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching and have a good night.